Hey, so today I have Laura Grant joining me on the podcast. I am so excited that we get to have this conversation, Laura, that you're here today. Thank you. Yeah. And I thought like if you could go ahead and just like tell everyone a little bit about you for those who don't know you yet, and they're going to so fall in love with you by the end of this Thank interview, you. but yeah, give them a little bit about you. Okay. Awesome. I am so excited to be chatting with Kate. I am a mom of three boys. My oldest is 12. Um, then it's 10 and eight. They all have summer birthdays. Wow. Um, I know. So yes. Older. I know. I, ca- I cannot believe it. So we've got middle schooler going on. And when um, I first started following Kate, I think he was probably first grade. No yeah. way that long yeah. ago. Oh my god! I know. Cause we left, um, we had lived in Chicago for 10 years and our David was essentially six when we moved to Tennessee. And that was kind of like the big shift for me. Such a huge yes. shift, right? Such Anytime you shift. make a yeah. big move like that. And especially when you have young children. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I can't believe that now we've been in Tennessee for six years and my youngest is eight, which just means like his whole life is here. So yeah, yeah, it was, it's good. And I'm a a graphic designer. I now have a brand design studio. So when I met Kate, yes, when I met Kate, I was, um, kind of at the height of my corporate graphic design career and was starting to shift into what I, I do now. So, yes, yes. Yes. Well, I cannot wait to dig into all of this with you because, you know, yeah, you were in the first round of the Purposeful Moms Club and yeah. it was really such an honor for me to support you in all of these different areas because we spent time working on it all. We talked about, you know, parenting and creating community yeah. as well as your business. And I mean, it was just such like a beautiful process to walk through with you. Yeah, it really and was. And that was, you joined the 2020 round. It was like September, 2020. Mm-hmm. And so if you can think back, yeah. I know, right. I mean, like, let's just set the context here. We were in a pandemic. Yeah. Right. And mm. I mean, it was, you would have probably joined right at the beginning of the school year when, you know, a lot of the kids were doing e-learning and we were having to adjust in so many ways to how the world was fluctuating around us. And what I think is so impressive about this is that, you know, for good reason, a lot of people just shut down during the pandemic because it was too much to handle. They were not thinking about growth. They were not thinking about intentionality. They were like, how can I keep all of the plates spinning? Yeah. How can I stay sane through all of this? But something in you was different. Yeah. And something drew you to joining the Purposeful Moms Club. Do you remember what was that? Oh my gosh. (laughs) Even just talking about 2020, I, I can remember being in my garage during e-learning and just having a personal meltdown, like just feeling like this has to be the lowest moment for me as a mother. I, yes, I just, and I, I was so aware in that moment that like, there was no real danger. Nothing was terribly, terribly wrong, Mm -hmm. but that I wanted to meet all of that so differently. Like I yes. wanted to be able to be present. And, and I knew that I think the most frustrating thing that I felt was like, I, I have a version of me that is, that is here. She's here. I need to find her. It was almost oh. like panic for like, I have to, I have to find her. This is my, this is my, my low. And um, at the time, I think I had been um, listening to the podcast, I had been participating in the Facebook group. So I also feel like that kind of like was stirring something inside of me where I was starting to really become more, um, introspective for 
as a mother, like probably the first authentic time of my life. Mm, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell me more about that. Like, yeah. you know, we often talk about in motherhood, like being on autopilot, right? Like yes. this idea of like, I'm, I'm doing everything that needs to be done. My kids are fed, they're clothed, you know, they're going yeah. to school or whatever. We're doing the things, but maybe I'm just not really there. Maybe yeah. I'm not really oh my like gosh, yes. being purposeful. I'm kind of reactive. So what was that for you? You kind of mentioned there being two versions of you. Yes. Okay. I was thinking about this today and I feel like the autopilot version of Laura was had like a, a, a wall and a cap to how much happiness mm. I could experience And it was sort of related to like habits, um, mindset, but I just, I feel like the big difference between 2020 and now is that like, I just, I wouldn't let happiness be felt in the moment because I was, I was generally anxious about something else. Yes. So that was, um, like that was the autopilot was, was kind of being in a place of looking at my tasks and looking at my life constantly and not really, um, taking pleasure in the moments and especially mm-hmm. pleasure in the moments with my kids. Cause I yes. felt like if there was a happy moment or a sweet moment, um, I needed to move quickly on to the next thing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Which is like such a common yeah. thing. Yeah, us mamas deal with because there can be this like franticness. Yeah, in motherhood because we carry this invisible load. Yeah, we constantly have the list in our minds, and and so then it kind of becomes more about the doing. Like, okay, yeah. I got to do this, and then we got to do this, and then it's now it's going to be dinner time, and then it's going to be bedtime, and then I'm and then I'm going to wake up. Yeah. Do it again. So where does happiness or joy fit into that? Right. It was almost as if I had the thought that I needed to finish this list and (laughs) then I could be happy. (laughs) Then I would sit down with my kids and it was so bizarre. It was, I, I realized that that is how my mind believed that that's how we got things done. Right. Almost mm-hmm. like the carrot, like, okay, yes. to, I'll enjoy my kids when all these other things are done. Yes, totally. Do we ever get done? No. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I definitely relate to that, Laura. That was a lot of my early experience too, was just um, yeah. constantly feeling like if I didn't keep up, I wasn't doing my job as a mom. And right. almost like for me, the flavor of it was like, it was irresponsible yes. for me. Like if I had a choice between sitting down and reading a book with my kids and cuddling for a few hours or getting the dishes and the laundry done, yeah, I felt like a bad mom if I didn't get the other things done. Cause that was the responsible thing to do. Even though in my heart, I knew that it was more meaningful Yes, time with my kids. Oh my gosh. Yes. And I even remember putting like, uh, what is it when you put your feelings on someone else to like projecting or projecting, deflect, projecting, yeah. projecting. Yes. Yeah, one of the yes. Ones. I remember projecting that on my kids because I, I now, if I want to hug one of my sons, um, or yeah. our foster kids, cause I'm a foster parent as well. We got to get um, that too. Yes. Yeah. Um, if I want to hug them or I want to just say something really sweet to them, in the past, I would filter that through whether or not they had done a good job. Like I would yes. think like, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Cause he just left that pile of toys over there and refused to clean it up. I'm not hugging him right now. I'm going to send him the message that I'm, you know, frustrated. Cause that's just how I believed. That's how we get kids to clean things up. Absolutely. <laughs> but yes. Yeah. And now I, I feel like there's so many more moments where I'm embracing them or I'm kissing them even on the cheek, which is something new for us. And, and we're just enjoying it. And, 
and to my core, I enjoy it. Like I've never oh before. Yeah. Yes. You know, and I'm really curious too, like you did so much inner work during the yeah. day on how you relate to yourself and how you think of yourself. And I wonder too, like yeah. sometimes the yes. way that oh my we gosh. love on our kids is really the way we love ourselves. Oh, a hundred percent of ourselves, how we communicate to ourselves. So did you notice any of those kind of parallels? Absolutely. Like I think, um, a hundred percent. I, I just didn't have the habit. Like I just hadn't paved the road the yeah. way that the road is now. And my, my norm was to, again, like filter my thoughts about my, myself through whether or not I had performed well, or if I, if I believed that I was worthy based on mm -hmm. how I was meeting my own standards. And that was just every day. And so I feel like, yeah, now the standards have shifted and I've also, um, I think I've celebrated more of my wins yes. than ever before. Yes. And yes. And like celebrate before the thing is done. And, um, oh. and one of, yeah, one of the things we had talked about when we were, um, working together in PMC was yeah. that I had some home updates I wanted to do. I remember. Yes. yes. <laughs> and I was like, I was focused on working my outside garden. And that was going to be like the, the work I was going to do on my, my home myself. Um, but when we talked, it became apparent that like, I wanted to work inside my house. I just didn't believe that I was worthy of having oh. a house like that. Yes, I remember, so, uh, remember that. And that was yeah. so pivotal. Um, so pivotal. I feel like I remember us having a conversation of like where to put your office and whether to yes. give your son the the room you yes. wanted for your office or oh not. Right. Gosh. It's like the right, it's that worthiness piece of like, do I actually deserve? Do I actually get to have what I want? Yes. Do I have to keep withholding from myself the things I actually desire? Yes, absolutely. And now I'm sitting in that office uh, and oh it's so gosh. gorgeous. They have three beautiful windows in here and um, it's such a happy space. And I think it's even happy because of what it means. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because of who you allowed yourself to become. Yeah. To move into that space. Oh, yeah. Just physical space, but actually your own being. Yeah. Yeah. And a reminder of like, and here I am being the person I wanted to be so much and my children are doing so well. And it, oh you know, gosh. they, it, yes. those two things were not in, in, um, uh, opposition yes. to each other. Yes. Yeah. So tell me like when you had kind of mentioned that when you came into the PMC, you were moving out of your career and into your own business. And mm -hmm. you moved, you created this office. You've definitely created some pivots in how your days function, right? Making yeah. space for everything. So tell me about how you came to greater clarity around your values mm -hmm. and what you want to prioritize in your days and what that even looks like now. So good. Um, journaling was something I picked up in the Purposeful Moms Club yes. and it, it, was so nice to be in a space where we could talk about how that looked for everyone. Because for me, my journaling can be, I mean, I journaled the other day and I kept writing down something like, how do I do this? How do I do that? How do I do this? And I just, I was on repeat and I, I could see my mental loop. Yes. And yes. so, yes. Yeah, so journaling and just, um, starting the day there, I still do that. Um, I'm, I'm noticing a lot about, um, thoughts and, um, a lot of anxiety comes out there and I, I wow. like to see it versus, um, having it kind of show up later in the day, you know, yeah. but, but in, in those things, I, I do discover like what is really important to me, um, 
and love showed up all over my Aww. journal pages. I just felt like I was like writing love to my kids, um, how much I loved something. Um, and sometimes I would journal just about myself. So yeah, that, those times were really crucial to, to see the values listed out. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then I, I think I allowed myself to, um, indulge, indulge, or just like play in the values mm -hmm. of, um, creating being creative. Yes. 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 And, and like for that. Yeah. Yes. And I, I think before I felt like creativity had to be really productive, but mm -hmm. it's interesting now how my, um, like discovering how much I love being creative has, open doors for me and made my business more enjoyable and more successful. Wow. So yeah, um, that was one. And I'm trying to think if there was like another, um, I definitely value my body more than I realized. And I think, mm. yeah, just health, yeah. um, and feeling good and not, um, that did kind of turn, uh, um, just an understanding on for me about um, what's the word when you're escaping or like um, numbing. Yeah. yeah. Yes, numbing out. So numbing out. So I could tell that like um, the more I valued my body and just taking mm -hmm. care of how I felt and making sure that like literally my stomach felt good. That was um, yes. an exercise that we did at the end of Purposeful Moms Club. Yes. With, yeah. um, Trisha. Yes. Right. Yes. And, um, she did the energy, um, Reiki. had an energy, yeah, the Reiki yeah. session yes. and it was all focused on my stomach. And I just remember thinking <laughs> like, that is, that is where I know whether or not I'm going to like, whether or not I'm feeling good, I feel it in my stomach. And, um, I just, it, incredible. Incredible. Yeah. And I think that we focused a lot on intuition and so many mm -hmm. of, um, so many of those things were intuitive, but I, I just wasn't seeing that yeah. before. Took, yes. Yeah. Because a lot of the work that we did was to help you reconnect to your intuition and to your inner knowing so that you did feel right. confident guiding yourself and directing your family and making those choices yeah. for yourself and for them. And, you know, what I loved about your round and the rounds that followed is that the journaling that we did, you know, there was a framework that we, we worked through that I worked with you all on, but a lot of, yes, I love that it was in individualized to to you and your needs and what you were working through. And so I was able to kind of walk that path with you and see what it was that you needed and the shifts you needed to make. And then yeah. giving you those questions to really help you self-explore. Yeah. What was important to you? What do you need? What do you want to prioritize? And, and it was really just such an incredible experience to watch you um, become so connected to yourself, to so trust you. yourself and like, and then oh, yes. not only to connect and to trust, but then you actually carried it out and you made those changes. Yeah. Yes. And they lasted. They have lasted. <laughs> I mean, I, I will never forget the session that we had where grief was really mm -hmm. heavy in my life. Yes. And I remember that one, oh like, my goodness. Me, like where I was sitting. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that, that like the, the trust that I mm -hmm. discovered in that time has been very foundational. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say that like, if there was a way to say like, I faced my greatest fear that that in that session, I really feel like I, I asked my, or we worked through these questions that were probably things I, I had never wanted to face like the yeah. deepest fears. And, um, 
finding that like in those moments that I am an anchor for myself was, yes. was like, oh my, oh, gosh, my I, gosh, I'm an anchor. We're going to be okay. <laughs> yes. Right. It's like this foundational truth of like, I can be a safe place for me Yes, and I can take care of me. But here's the thing, Laura, is that yeah. you were willing to go that deep. Oh, you thank are you. a woman who leads herself right? Because for me, like as the coach and as the facilitator, I can only take a client as deep as they're willing to go. Mm-hmm. So it feels safe to go. And so for me, being able to hold that space for you and feeling wow. almost like feeling into your shifts as you were experiencing it on that call was yeah. just like, I'll never forget it. But oh, I just felt so honored you. that we, right, that we got to do that work together and create that for you. Yeah. And I love that that is uh, connect, connected to being a mom. I just, I think I had felt like being a mom was like a, um, a compartment of my life. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But that in fact, like all of it was so integrated and, um, I, I knew I wanted to live in a way where I was one whole person who could kind of shift in between places and people and feelings and, yeah. and just still be myself. Mm, yes. Yeah. Yes. So how did that work in the PMC impact your ability to show up confidently in all of your roles and like be able to yeah. shift? Yeah, I think that I knew who I was and I knew what I wanted and yeah. I wasn't looking for other people to um, tell me what to do anymore. Yes. Yeah, that I... Ooh. Oh, Gosh, that's a huge one, isn't it? It's like, oh my God. Yeah. Like the looking outside, trying to find someone who's the expert who can tell me, how do I do yes. this? Thing? How do I parent? How do I make decisions? Yeah. And you found that within. Yeah, I did. And I, I think that, um, I maybe in the past didn't understand like how, um, how precious that was. I felt like that was kind of like a, um, like women who knew what they wanted were just a personality type and I just didn't have it like fixed, like a fixed. Yeah. Right. Some people have it. Like some people have brown hair and some people have blonde. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I no no, And it, it's again, like such an anchor. I just, yeah, I found that there. And What's interesting too, is I look back, um, I did read through, I think this year, um, my goals, I think I had made oh, like yes. five goals yes. and oh my gosh, like I, um, one of the goals, which cracked me up, but I put it on there was that I wanted to be an athlete because oh my I, I, yeah, why did I, 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 mean, that. So- I know it was like, <laughs> I, I remember that the instruction was just to really, um, like dream big big. and dream big. And I was like, well, I have literally floundered, um, athletically my whole life. I would, I would like to be an athlete in some sense. Yes. 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 And so, um, within the purposeful moms club, having Ashley in there speaking to yoga and just, I was following her. Um, I uncovered how much I love yoga. I kind of felt like I gave myself permission to love yoga and, Uh, um, and let it be my, my, um, my sport and athleticism, right? Because right. You were, you were defining what that word means for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and now I, I do yoga and when I do it, um, I don't give up. Like I'm, I'm in the pose and I'm, my body is, is changing, um, in ways that like I've desired for a long time, just (gasps) like core strength, you know, I've always wanted that. And I felt like, you know, all these athletes, they had that. And, um, so that one kind of cracked me up, like, (laughs) but but you did, but you still, but I did it it, right. Like you're you're not in the NBA. 
right you now, but you didn't want to be, you know, it's okay. It's okay. Right. You know, but like yeah. you're redefining athleticism. And I think too, the corollaries with that is that during that time, you really develop that like commitment. Yeah. The perseverance, the like sticking to something, believing in yourself. Yeah. That is serving you so well now. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I definitely feel like, because I, um, in, enjoy myself more, yeah. um, that in the moments I'm not my self critical voice is not really around when mm. I'm, you know, shaken through the pose and <laughs> I'm like laughing or I'm smiling, or I'm just like, I am doing this. So which is just, it's a totally different way to relate to yourself. Because I think a lot of us women, for whatever reason, have been conditioned to be really hard on ourselves, to white knuckle our entire lives with like, I have to control this. And if I'm not doing it perfectly, there's something wrong with me. And so that inner voice can be so incredibly harsh. Yeah. And, you know, it sounds like that's something that you have been really able to I don't even know if maybe overcome is the right word, but like work with, live with. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like she's she knows the game plan now. And yeah. And she understands what we're working towards. And she's not not <laughs> panicking and and not she's she's not as anxious. Mm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Yes. Oh, and another one would be the yes. adoptive mother. <gasps> Okay. Yes. Let's, let's please, let's dig into that because I feel like okay, that yes. one is, is a really, really, it's a life. It completely changed your life. Yeah, it really did. So we, I have known for a long time that I wanted, um, to be an adoptive mother of a daughter. And, um, after almost like right after the purposeful moms club, my husband and I, um, observed my sister-in-law fostering two girls. And we just felt like that's it. Like though, that's what we wanted to do. Um, we really started to feel like we wanted a local to help out local children. So we went ahead and got our, our foster license, um, so that we could jump in and, and see about this little girl. Um, and then after, having just some more experience, we felt like we wanted to be open to a sibling pair. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. And yeah. So crazy. Like just in the sense of like, I discovered that I had things to offer beyond, it sounds weird for me, but like that was not specifically the box of adopting a daughter anymore. Um, and one of the things was that my 12 year old had an IEP. Yeah. And so when we, um, met the placement that we have now, he had, um, it's a sibling pair, a boy and a girl. And, um, it was clear that one of the things that could help these kids was to get the son, um, an IEP. Oh, wow. And yeah. yeah, so I just felt like this is a dream. I want to do this. I want to learn in this and grow in this too. Oh, and, yeah. um, and just enjoy a daughter for however long. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what got us into our current placement that has now been, um, a year and a half. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And things I've learned are huh, just that like, because I wanted to, to mother a daughter, I'm a wonderful fit for a girl who needs a mother just for a little bit. And Mm -hmm. that like, I know. Um, so I, I think it's interesting that I'm willing to have that flexibility now, just knowing like I'm, I am living my dream with her. And at the same time, um, I'm open to whatever happens in the future. And right now we're cheering them on to move back to family. Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. And this, yeah. Yeah. It's sweet. 
It is, it is bittersweet. And I'm, I know that like the, I don't know. I, I know that the confidence and the strength that I felt that like, I, I hate to say is like, I'm patting myself on the back, but um, I just enjoyed these kids so much when we had our, when they were first placed. Mm -hmm. And I know that the Laura um, before the purposeful moms club would have just um, probably struggled with the little things and, and the stress and, oh, and the yeah. schedules and might have gotten lost in it all. But, um, it just, it didn't feel that way when they came. I, I remember feeling like, um, just like lucky us that we get to have fun and pleasure, you know, and that I, I'm, I'm in this with them and I'm present for all the moments. Oh my gosh. Well, so. that's, like, that's such a, um, that's such a shift. And that's so different from the way that I think a lot of us tend to relate to our lives and to experiences. Mm -hmm. Like when I hear you describe that, it's almost like you were able to be outside of yourself and yeah. look inward at this beautiful and meaningful experience that you're having and feel just like pure gratitude for what is like, yes. you're not trying to make it be something different. You're not trying right. to change anyone. You're simply present. And it's in that presence that we have the most meaningful and joy-filled experience. Yeah. I, I absolutely feel that way. Oh. Um, and, and we've definitely been stretched and stressed oh, beyond yeah. any, no, yeah, I any mean, norm. I'm, I'm not fostering. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm so in awe of you and your strength Thank and you. like the love that you have to pour out on other children. Like that's such a gift that you're giving. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm so proud of my kids. I'm yeah. so thankful that my, my spouse is who he is. I'm also really thankful that we, um, I, I do feel like our communication and, um, my relationship with my husband, um, grew a lot during the purposeful moms club as well. And, and I think it looked like this where I was afraid to be this version of myself in some capacity. Yeah, yeah. And once I was, um, I, I needed to feel my husband's, um, love and, and oh, yeah. kindness and all that. And just, and he, he was there for every minute, you know, and oh. I, I feel like, yeah, like our relationship has only, um, grown and we feel like this freedom to, to go and come back. And, um, like right now he's actually on a business trip. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wait, he's on a birding trip. Um, but, he's but I just, somewhere. he's somewhere <laughs> and, um, and that trusting of myself definitely translated to a trust oh, in yeah. our marriage. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Well, you know, the yeah. thing is, is that like, I'm sure you've heard this phrase before or like some variation of it, but like the idea that we can't change other people. Mm -hmm. We can only change ourselves, but when we're willing to go first and change ourselves, we notice our world around us then shifts in response. Yeah. And it sounds like that was your experience is like you were willing to go first, Laura, Thank and create you. the change that you wanted to see in your home, yeah. in your marriage, in your parenting within yourself. Mm, that's so good. Yeah. <clears throat> I definitely feel that. I feel that. And and it's so funny to think like, why, why didn't that sound safe before, you know, mm. to go first? Yeah. It really didn't. I, I think in the past I would have wanted a plan from someone else. I would have yeah. wanted, um, to take it slow. Um, and that was another thing I thought about this morning was just, I feel like I've grown and tried new things faster than I ever would have Yeah. Oh my in the gosh. past. Really? I mean, 
Yes. I, if I look at all the things that I was willing to try, um, since being in the purposeful moms club, yeah. Um, it probably without the support and the, and the coaching work would have taken me like 10 years. And I, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like right. I, I was ready to jump into things just knowing just so huge. Yeah. It's, I mean, and it's not, not that we should get like in scarcity about time. I know that's mm-hmm. one of my, I definitely, definitely. That's one of my very human traits is like, I get very scarce about time more so mm-hmm. like the passing of time, right? Yeah. Like my children and like, am I right. making this meaningful enough? Are we creating the memories? Are we doing what we said we were going to do as a family? That's my own particular event. But mm-hmm. with that said, it's like 10 years in the lifespan of our children mm-hmm. um, is like half of it, half of their time with us. So it's like, right. do, you, do you want to wait 10 years to make those changes? Or in your case, like this, it sounds like this joining the PMC opened you up to being able to make changes faster. To yeah. Have the meaningful life that you desire now and not wait. Right. Yeah. I think that I felt like I needed to be the person who did those things and that that was clearly going to take some time because of the way I thought about myself. (laughs) Yeah. But it, yeah. And I think that, um, the, um, I'm trying to think specific example. Um, yeah. I mean, fostering really was kind of a dive in moment for us. Oh, yeah. And yeah. And, and I do look back and think like, we're a year and a half in after this placement, we'll definitely take a break. Yeah. Um, we might be done. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and then I look at my 12 year old and I think to myself, like, oh, I am so lucky he's 12 and I get all this time with him and I've already, um, you know, I've already gotten to foster. Like that is so you're cool. Already, yeah. That yeah, I know that dream off. Right. I'm a yogi now. You, I mean, <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. Yeah. So, tell me more about like how your business grew mm-hmm. out of that work. Because I am watching, so for everyone listening yeah. to watching this, like Laura creates the most beautiful designs. Like I follow you Thank on Instagram you. and I just like watch all your latest designs come out. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like oh. they're just, they're just so incredible. And so like, what, what got you to that point to really like zeroing in on what you desired for your business and kind mm-hmm. of owning your own unique path with it? Yeah. Oh my goodness. So many things. Um, so many things. I think that we talked about the current work I was doing in the purposeful moms club and talking through how I truly felt about that work, which was, um, very data heavy, very like document. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Um, I think in the design world, we call those designers pixel pushers. Um, <laughs> and, and we safely say yeah. that, like, that's how we describe ourselves in our early careers of where you're just able to make the thing. And so you're making yes. the thing, whether or not um, you love what you're doing. Yeah. And yes. Yes. So I, I started to, um, I looked into design coaching that was a big one. And so having Ah. done coaching with Kate, I felt like, okay, I know what this is like. I'm going to try it. Um, and I, I found two different things. One was a coach. One was a mentorship. Um, Mm. yes. So the coaching helped me to see my business in a way where it could be a lot more profitable. Um, yes. If I shifted the type of projects I did and the way that I did them. And especially the way that I onboarded new clients, the way I, um, uh, did proposals, all that work that in the past, I just felt was like, I can't bill for that. Why am I going to do that? Why am I going to, yeah, 
I'm only going to oh just sit. I know as a mom, I just felt like when I sit down at my computer, I want to turn the time clock on and then I want to bill for that work and I don't want to think about it, but that wasn't true. So I did the coaching um, and that really revamped like my business mindset. Oh yeah. Yes. And then after that, I did um, this mentorship with a um, an author and creative director in the, the UK. Ooh, Her name is, cool. oh, she's so cool. Um, Fiona Humberstone. Okay. And she is, um, she's on Instagram. She's the brand stylist. Okay. First I got her book and, yeah. um, absolutely loved it. It was called how to style your brand. Uh, and I actually got it for myself and for my own business. Cause I felt like, you know, I'm a, I'm a designer. I got to figure this out for myself. And yeah. For myself. I need to <laughs> brand then... myself. Yeah. And, um, and then I started following her and just fell in love with brand design. And I remember thinking like, I think I'm good at logos. And, um, I, I realized that's kind of special. Like, Logos aren't, aren't for everyone. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. And so I started working on the brand design part of my design um, career. And uh, let's see, like this summer, um, I got my first just pure brand design client. And I worked that just like I had learned in my mentorship. Yeah. And discovered like, I can do this. And this is exactly what I want to do. Um, so I actually have, I've hired someone to, yes, to help me with the business side. No way. Yes. And that has been game changer. I, I've always wanted to hand off the business side um, yep. and focus on the creative side, but I always felt like that would be a waste of money, which is so silly. Right. But, because you can potentially make more when you focus on what it is that you're really good at and let someone take care of what feels like the busy work. Yeah, exactly. Um, so then I started working with my online business manager in, I think it was September. And that was like the icing on the cake being Huge. able, oh my Such gosh, now like changer. studio yeah. is set up. I can handle, um, complete rebrands and my target client are physical businesses that want to refresh their, um, their brand, their menu, the interior, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, so excited because I am already talking with people with my target clients. I've already well, met because, a couple yes, you're because your work, like it stands out. Thank you. So I'm not surprised that you are already drawing in your perfect people and like Thank how incredible you. that you're getting to do this work. I'm so grateful. I love it. Mm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So many big, amazing. big, big, big shifts for you. Yeah. In the last two years. It's really yes. remarkable how much your life has changed. Yeah. And, and really what's a short amount of time. Two years. It really, really is. That much. Yeah, I, I really, I, again, when I think about like, what did get me to the place where I am with my brand studio, if I were to have assessed like my readiness, my readiness, yeah, it would have taken years. Yeah. I, I just know that, but the confidence that I felt in myself gave me, um, like I felt comfortable taking the risks. And they weren't actually risks. If I think about yes. it, like working with doing the mentorship, a lot of it was just financial risk and yeah. the way that I understood money um, yeah. years ago would not have, it just would have hold, held me back. I, I had a new, um, like an, I have a new habit of investing in myself and in my business and that really started um, with the Purposeful Moms Club, I'd say. Mm, yeah, yeah, right. Because it's like you have to have that first experience and it can feel so scary. Yes. First time to invest in yourself. I mean, like I remember when I first started with my life coach and I'm like, send. I, I mean, I felt like I barely knew her, right? I had yeah. to just find a coach on the internet and I'm like, okay, you look good and I need help. <laughs> 
and I'm yes. like, send you money. And my brain was like, what if you never hear from her again? What if you right. send this money over and it doesn't work or like it's a waste of money and you just used your family's money to get a life coach? Right. And so I understand like I had to work through all of that myself. Mm -hmm. And then I remembered, I, I think I spent like $2,000 on branding for my original, like way back in the day, my website. Yes. Like, yes. Designer, like make my logo and like build out my homepage and, and same thing. It was like, yeah, it's going to pay off. But right. Then, right. And I think this is your experience too. You start to build this own like internal dialogue and, and narrative around like, it's safe for me to invest in me. And these mm -hmm. investments always pay off, even if it's not always like in dollars, it's in who I'm being, who I'm becoming, what I'm contributing to my family and in the world. Mm -hmm. And then it starts to feel really safe to bet on yourself in that yes. way. Right. It's almost like it's, it's more concerning now if I ignore <laughs> the, if I, yes. yes, if I ignore the, um, the times that I'm, I'm sure I should invest yes. and that it's what I need. Yeah. Yes. Right. So trusting that instinct. Right. And, and trusting yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, what would you say to someone who is considering coming into the PMC? We're getting ready to do the next round is going to be starting mm. in January. What would you say to someone who is considering oh. making the leap? I would, if you are like me and it's, the future is kind of unclear, but you're, you're sure that there is, um, more that you want from, from your life, from your experience with yourself then I would, I would just so recommend that you commit and, um, be light on yourself when you do it. Like, don't feel like you need to commit and know what your, um, what it is exactly that you want to do with your life because you will know, and you will discover it. And you'll do that because you're involved. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. That your, um, your, your path will make itself clear. So I would say that, um, to anybody who's feeling like they need to have more ducks in a row to do it, <laughs> yeah. which I tend to feel, but, um, and then I would just say, you know, if you're a mother and you just want, um, to feel more love and joy for your children in the moments. And maybe you don't even know why there's a wall, um, that this is the right thing for you. This is going to be, um, it's going to be the most beautiful way to take down that wall and to, um, uncover how you want to love your kids in your own way. I can even think of moms in my head that like, I would love for them to do it. It would just, oh, yeah, yeah. you hear their frustration sometimes and you're like, oh, I just, I feel like the missing, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like the missing piece is, it's this wall that you just don't even know is, um, you don't even know what it is and, and we don't know why it's there. And, and you just need to um, look at it with other moms and with Kate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's what we do, right? It's what we create in this space. And yeah, everybody's journey, everyone who's gone through it, each woman who I've witnessed walk through the Purposeful Moms Club, her journey has been so different. Her yeah. outcome has been unique, but it's always been exactly what she needed for that moment in her life to mm. create that next stage and to be mm -hmm. fully in it and feel present to it. So yeah, I'm so grateful. I mean, I'm grateful not only that you were in the PMC, I'm grateful that you're here today, that you're sharing your wisdom, your experiences, you. and I'm just so grateful that you're in the world. 
Oh it is my just gosh. Been such a blessing to know you. And like, oh, this is just doing my heart so good to just see how happy you are and all Thank the beautiful you. things you've created in your life. Thank you so much. I think uh, if I had known, or if I knew this interview was going to be um, a piece of my life floating out there, if I had known that two years ago, and if I had listened to this girl talking, I mean, I just, I'm so grateful. I, I can't even, ex I, I have explained it, but like, I, I just, yeah. I'm so grateful. So thank you, Kate, mm. from the bottom of my heart, from my kids, you know, I just, we're all getting to live in this new space and it's amazing. Well. Wow. Yeah, it's the feeling is so mutual. And it's like this for me is why I do this work. It's like, yeah. this is what always keeps me going is like, oh, just hearing, hearing this from you. Yeah. So I'm going to be cheering you on. And just, it's, you know, such a pleasure to see everything that you're doing for everyone who's like listening. They're like, oh my gosh, I need some, I need to get to know this Laura gal. Oh like, I need to connect. Follow me. Yeah. Tell them like, how can they find you online? Yes. Okay. So my website, my Instagram, my email is all Laura Grant design. So if you're going to be looking for me on uh, my website, it's lauragrantdesign.com. My Instagram is Laura Grant design. And then my email is Laura at Laura Grant design. And you can reach out. I would love to hear from you and, um, I would love if anybody does want to um, chat at all about the Purposeful Moms Club. I mean, I could talk all day about it. So <laughs> just, just find me. Find, find Laura. And yes. she, she will hold your hand. Through yes. The process. yes. Oh yes. my gosh. You are just so amazing. You're such a beautiful soul. And Thank yes, you. so everyone find Laura online, take a look at her designs and just the way that she's leading life. And I will put all of that in the show notes as well at katesaffle.com forward slash podcast. You'll be able to find it. So thank you so much. I mean, until next time, right? Like, yes, the next conversation and so happy you were here. Thank you so much, Kate. I love it. And I love um, cheering you on online. It's so fun. <laughs> oh.